Hey everybody, in this video, we're gonna show you how to use AI tools to add human readable comments to your SQL queries. So let's jump into MySQL Workbench here. I'm gonna walk you through, we've got this roughly 200 lines of SQL code that basically takes some self-reported customer attribution data where they tell us how they found out about Maven Analytics, and it takes that dirty data that's very raw and non-standardized and does a lot of these when then pairs through a SQL case statement to clean them up and make the results in aggregate view that we can use to analyze our marketing activity. It also goes into looking into revenue and understanding if those customers paid for a paid subscription. And then finally, it's taking that data and inserting it into a table called the student attribution table, which has been truncated at the very beginning. And then we do all these calculations and we repopulate that data entirely. So what I'm gonna try to do here is see if we can get ChatGPT to add comments here to make this more human readable for other people. So here's the prompt. I'm gonna say, you'll be acting as a senior analyst who is an expert in SQL. You'll be helping me, a junior analyst on your team, understand SQL queries that we will use together on the job. Can you add comments to the following query to make it easier for other analysts to understand? I'm just gonna put in something here as a delimiter to kind of make that clear that something else is coming. And then I will just copy in that entire code here. So now we can run this prompt and we'll see that pretty quickly we start to get a result and it was fast. So let's take a look at this. It notes that we're truncating the existing student attribution table. Yep. Creating a temporary table called clean source to store cleaned up student data. That's absolutely what's happening. We've got this, basically this function here is converting everything to lower case and replacing spaces with no spaces just to make the data a little bit more standardized, makes the rest of it perform a little bit faster. Then we have a comment saying, we are creating a temporary table called attrib source to store the attributed sources, which absolutely that is what we're doing there. It has a little note here that we're cutting off the various sources. So it's not actually listing out the entire code. So that's a good thing to note in case you're actually like trying to copy this. I'll see in a minute if there is a way to copy kind of the full code or if you just would need to be on the lookout for that. Next, it's creating a temporary table called with revenue to include revenue information, which is accurate. And then finally, inserting the attributed data into the student attribution table. So this is pretty good. I really like the way that it just kind of takes the names of the columns and the table and it sees what's happening. And it is really just doing a pretty good job of turning that into human readable comments. I'm impressed with how it performs generally here. Sometimes that's been hit or miss, but most of the time it is pretty good at taking some existing code and putting some comments in there. Note, it also throws this more descriptive explanation at the bottom here. I think that's because I had additionally asked for explanation of the queries because I'm this junior analyst and it's the senior analyst on the team. So in this case, the prompt was kind of asking for that, even though my goal on this one wasn't necessarily to get this, it was more about getting the commented code. So that's just kind of one little note on the prompt engineering. I was maybe asking for too many things and you might wanna narrow in here and remove that from the prompt if that's really your only goal. Final little point, I'm gonna go up here and just check on this. I'm gonna copy this code so we can see how this works. I'll go back into Workbench. And when I copy this in here, we can see if it pasted the full code or no, it's just a shortened code. So we've got about 70 lines of code and you can see that even in that copied version, it has this note that there is continued mapping for various sources. So you definitely wouldn't wanna just copy that code. You need to take the comments, kind of put them back in your original code, but that's really not a problem. Pretty easy little task there. So this I think is pretty good. It could definitely be a shortcut if you're inheriting some code that you haven't seen before and it's pretty lengthy. Might wanna give this a try. You could give it a try in Bard as well. I won't walk you through that right now, but again, it's great to do a comparison of both the AI tools and see what they get you. Just remember to use your critical thinking. My experience has been that this has been very good as a use case for the AI tools, but not perfect. I expect that in a few years, it will be even better as 
the tools continue to get more feedback from users. But right now, it's already pretty good, definitely good enough to help you out in certain cases. So give it a try yourself and see if it helps improve your workflow. Hey there, if you like this video and you wanna learn more, check out our brand new free course, ChatGPT for Data Analytics. You can find it at mavenanalytics.io. We'll walk you through our best practices and some of the most interesting use cases for tools like Excel, Google Sheets, Power BI, SQL, and Python. It's a fun little course, and it's a great way to get up to speed in these new AI tools. I hope you'll check it out and let us know what you think.